let's face it, descending is far more fun than climbing and a just reward for putting in all that effort slogging against gravity. So to increase that feeling of exhilaration or simply to improve your technique and speed, we present to you how to descend faster. faster. prove it anything you've got to be willing to push your boundaries and your limits but you've got to be careful on descent because you don't want to do this recklessly the risks for getting it wrong are just too high so a really good way to do it safely is to follow another rider one who is more proficient and also faster than you yeah without pushing too hard so you feel uncomfortable follow the rider in front for as long as you can just making sure you drop off by a few meters to give yourself some space. Watch their body position. Watch when they apply the brakes. And crucially, watch the lines that they take. Now, you can always back off a little bit if things get a bit hairy, but I guarantee that if you do this regularly, then you will see some big gains. To descend effectively, safely, and also quickly, you need to be relaxed, both in body and also mind. So if you're mentally tense, and that's gonna subconsciously affect the way that you hold your body on the bike. So everything from tension in your neck right through to the way you grip the handlebars. If you're too nervous, then you're not gonna give the bike the freedom that it needs to work for you. So before adopting the following position, you need to take a deep breath, relax, and then Clear your mind. Get your position low on the drops. Bend your elbows. And get yourself into a nice aerodynamic position. And that'll have the effect of lowering your back, lowering your centre of gravity, and thus improving your grip. Now make sure that on the descent, you always hold the bottom of the handlebars. Because if you hold the tops, you risk your hands bouncing off on rough surfaces. You and your bike will go where you fix your gaze. So don't look down at the road or directly at the wheel in front or at the rider in front. Look where you want to go. It's also very important to scan the horizon for potential hazards. And that's even more vital if you're looking to press on at even higher speeds as your brain will need to process things far more quicker. Now don't turn around when you're descending either, because that can easily make you veer offline. Always scan the road ahead, and that even means you can't admire the view. The smoother you're braking and the faster you're cornering, the more momentum that you'll carry through the corner so that they'll make it far easier to pick up your speed again and you'll also save a little bit of energy. Now when cornering, looking where you want to go remains absolutely integral to your technique. So as you enter the corner, you actually want to be looking for the exit and then that'll draw you nicely through the turn. Now the most tried and tested way of cornering is to basically brake on the approach to the corner and not in the corner itself. So shave off as much speed as you can going in and then try not to brake too much in the corner itself. Now, as you brake for the corner, you want to be using both brakes at the same time, although favouring your front because that is more efficient. And then, as you enter the corner, you want to drop your outside foot, put your weight through there, and then also your inside hand, and that will really drive the bike into the corner and give you loads of grip. And then all that's left to do is to kick out hard, accelerate back up to speed as fast as you can. Now stability is key here. We've all seen the pros adopting those fantastical positions in search of a few extra Ks an hour. But the fact is, that's really way too dicey to recommend doing out on the open road. So the trick is to keep your back flat 
and your head tucked in while still having the ability, of course, to see where you're going. Yeah, what you need to do is get your hands on the drops, put your arms by your side and get your crank arms parallel with your chainstay to get yourself as aero as possible. Now, where you put your hands will be dictated a lot by the road surface and also by your confidence and skill. Well, that was exhilarating. And what we learnt, Matt? Quite a lot. Well, yeah, because it was a long descent. You need to relax, you need to get aero, you need to look ahead, nail your braking and quarter techniques, and also remember what physics tells us, which is that the faster we go, the more stable we become. Now, for more downhill action, but the other way round, i.e. climbing, how about this? Europe's top seven, or seven of Europe's top climbs. And for more descending action, where well, we had a chainless race in the United States of America, to find out the fastest GCN presenter downhill, click just down here. And then subscribe to GCN, click on the globe. It, you won by that much, Matt. It was a win's a win. No, seriously, it was that much. A win is a win.